Hi, my name is Peter Akerley. I'm president and CEO of Erdine Resource Development. We're a company focused on southwestern Mongolia, where we found a new gold district, a new high-grade gold district we call the Hundi Minerals District. Our objective is to move that through exploration and development to establish a multi-million ounce resource and bring those resources to production to create a uh, significant return for investors. Peter. Thank you. That's a great introduction. Um, we haven't met before, but uh, I'm really looking forward to getting to know a bit more about the geology um, of Erdine Resources. Now, I've, I've worked in Central Asia, and there's lots of talk about the kind of the Central Asian gold belts. Um, I wondered if you could, I mean, because people are so unfamiliar with Mongolia, could you provide us with a bit of context? And but I don't know if you've got a map, but just kind of explain where... Erdine ground sits within the kind of the broader potential of uh, of Mongolia, in particular reference to the things that people might know, which are Oya Tolgoi and perhaps the the Centera mine Kumtor. Certainly, and thank you, Merlin. Um, just by way of background, I first went into Mongolia in the late 1990s, just as it opened up to uh, foreign investment, and we set out to seek out major near surface uh, open pitable copper gold deposits. We felt that the um, region in the southern part of the country, which is host to the Central Asian Orogenic Belt, was the uh, premier place to explore for those uh, for those types of deposits. And I'll uh, share that with you here. Now. That's um, that's quite a long time ago. So, uh, and um, are you kind of um, is Erdine an overnight success that's taken twenty years to um, produce? <laughs> You know, it takes a long time to find the really good ones. And, uh, and we've been very methodical and scientific about this. And today, you know, we can look back and say that we have found um, four deposits and a multitude of prospects. It truly is an exciting new location that we have in, uh, in southwestern Mongolia. So, you know, this is the area of focus for us. We, um, we looked at southern Mongolia as the, the premier location in the country for copper gold. Uh, discoveries, as you're well aware, Oyu Togoi in the eastern part of the country was discovered in 95, 96 by the Magma Copper guys and now has established itself as one of the top new copper gold developments globally led by Rio Tinto. But we looked at this belt, we, um, we saw the number of true giants along the trend as you move through Kyrgyzstan and uh, Kazakhstan. And we established a program uh, over the past decade that was the first sort of scientific methodical regional exploration program in that part of the country. And we focused in knowing where these deposits were situated elsewhere along the trend. We used that knowledge to base our program and uh, spent you know, upwards of $10 million on regional exploration, exploring this 400 kilometer belt that led us to the discovery of what we call the Hyundai Gold Copper District that I'll speak to you about today. Uh, and, um, so you were saying about $10 million of kind of regional exploration before you honed in on this, on this area. And how long did that take to kind of process? How, you know, how long have you been at Erdine and how long, um, you know, at what stage in the evolution um, yeah. is, is, is this most recent kind of incarnation? Sure. So we created Erdine in 2002 on the backs of my first uh, experience in Mongolia during those that late 90s period. And since 2004, we've been a publicly listed company on the TSX. In 2005, we acquired what's known as the Zunmod molybdenum project, a large, uh, now a large molybdenum copper uh, porphyry deposit. And that kind of got us cemented into that, that region that we call the Edrin terrain. Um, from 2005 to 2011, we focused our energies on uh, defining that resource at Zunmod, but we began to develop this regional exploration program I spoke about. And really from 2009 to 2011, we devoted the majority of our exploration dollars into that regional exploration work. And that led to the discovery of firstly, the Altenar polymetallic gold deposit, and then uh, subsequent to that 16 kilometers south, the Bayan Hyundai uh, system. And it's really that Bayan Hyundai Ulan system that has become the focus today. And uh, that is this epithermal system overprinted on a uh, uh, intrusive porphyry type system at depth. Uh, you've described that from kind of 2011, uh, but uh, exploration dollars from 2011 were almost impossible to get. So is it fair to say that there's been a, an acceleration in uh, in the last couple of years relative to the um, the period 2011 to 2018. Yeah, we it's it's an interesting um, 
story, really, that we came out of the global financial crisis, the 2008 crisis, into 2009, very well capitalized. We'd just done a significant raise prior to the crash, and that armed us with the dollars necessary to do the regional exploration to explore that district when nobody else was going to go in there because there were no exploration dollars available. Really from 2012 to 2015, after we made the Altenar discovery, again, there's a period where you had to scratch and claw to get exploration dollars. We managed to do enough to establish the initial resource at Altenar. We also uh, entered into a joint venture with tech resources that helped bring some of those dollars in for regional exploration. And we discovered Bayan Hyundai. And we discovered Bayan Hyundai really at the exact right time because gold gold price and the interest in gold equities increased in 2016, 2017. So just as we're coming out with news that we're picking up 4,000 gram samples at surface, we're hitting a sweet spot in the market. And that uh, led to a financing in 2017 that provided us with the funding to focus on the definition and technical studies for buying Hyundai. And that was our focus right through till mid 2020. When again, we hit another sort of sweet spot in the equities market for gold and Eric Sprott supported a major raise that provided us for one of the first times in many, many years, the wherewithal to become aggressive on expiration again, yeah. to get back to our roots. How and much that, was that? So that was $20 million. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. And do you still have an association with tech? Sorry, I should, I should um, have... Tech remains a shareholder. Uh, that joint venture regional exploration uh, project ceased a few years ago, but they remain about three or four percent shareholder in Erdine. Right. Yeah. That's that, that's great. Yeah. And just to, to finish that thought off, I guess that period from um, from mid twenty twenty when we raised those dollars carried through a significant exploration program in 2021, which has led to two fantastic discoveries, the Ulan discovery and the Dark Horse discovery. I love them. I, I'm so excited. I, I, come on, let, let's, let's, get, let's get into it. Um, can, you, can you pull up that map again or, 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 or the next one? Sure. I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently, see if we can't get a uh, better view. And how many rigs have you got going at the moment? There's two rigs on site. Um, we've just taken a pause in drilling as we wait for these next uh, batch of results to come through. Um, so we just released uh, yesterday the Ulan results. And I expect in the next couple of weeks, we'll have the next batch of results for um, Dark Horse Oxide. Uh, we'll then be back to drilling as we move into March. Um, that's right. So I've I've seen that you're trying to put to, not trying to, but you are putting together a resource uh, on Dark Horse, and you had a kind of a data cutoff or a drill cutoff in November December of last year. Is that that's right? That's right. Yeah. So the focus there is to establish a resource that we can quickly develop into reserves that we could feed into the plant at Bayan Hyundai early in its life. The, the Dark Horse Discovery is just two and a half kilometers north of the Bayan Hyundai deposit. And as you'll see, as I share some of this information with you, just a fantastic bonanza grade super gene oxide cap on a new discovery there. We haven't really gotten into the roots of that yet, but the continuity of ultra high grades at surface is pretty spectacular. Um, great. And... Is there, an, is there an oxide cap at Bayan Hyundai as well? Or is, um... There's not. You know, what we've seen as we move further uh, south to the, um, or sorry, move north from Bayan Hyundai is an increase in uh, sulfide composition at depth. In fact, the dark horse system is associated with a litho cap at surface and an increase in copper content at depth. And that's contributed to the ability of those surface fluids to generate the acids to concentrate that gold in the super gene. Um, we see pockets of it at Bayan Hyundai. You, when we have had intersections of 100 to 500 grams per ton over a meter in the top of Bayan Hyundai, but they're pockets. Whereas at Dark Horse, we have more of a blanket along hundreds of meters of trend with those types of grades. So... Um, could you just describe the geology? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my orientation, trying to get my understanding sure. of, 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 yeah. of this. So, so what, let's let's start at Bayan Hundi because that was the first one you discovered. Yeah. Um, are, you how, able to, are you able to see the map again? Yeah, I can see your map. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
Bayan Hyundai is a, a low sulfidation epithermal system that we discovered back in 2015, 2016. And it's represented that surface by intense quartz, agillaria, plus or minus hematite, specular veins. But it's uh, enclosed or enveloped in a broad halo of you know, 10 to up to 100 meters of lower grade disseminated uh, gold mineralization, almost devoid of sulfides, which is a real benefit for the, um, for the metallurgy. As you move um, west of that into the Ulan system, it's pretty much identical. You're really not seeing much of a change in uh, composition of the uh, rock or the style of mineralization. The system continues to the west where it remains open. Um, Hang on, sorry, the, quick, question, quick question. When you say low grade in the kind of outside of the main structures, what do, you, what do you mean? Are you kind of point ones, point twos, or? We use a point four cutoff in our resource estimate, uh, but you know, looking at that broader mineralized envelope, yeah, point two, point three. Okay, so the, so that's the kind of the background, and then you've got the kind of structures within that, and so the overall, um, yeah. and. Yeah. Um, so you've got an overall grade at, um, at Bayern Hundi for uh, 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 three grams per ton. Um, That's right. And is, is it, um, uh, does the pit outline the, or the kind of the, the, that circle, does that, out, does that describe the, the broad aspect of it? And have you managed to either find a route or can you vector to uh, where you think the kind of the, the feeder zones are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe just to step back a little bit, looking at this map that you have on your screen in front of you, the, the system here is effectively tra traversing the entire uh, distance of these two licenses. So you have a very large um, intrusive alteration system at depth. So porphyry style, um, argillic alteration, advanced argillic, tourmaline. And then overprinted on that is the low sulfidation system. Those low sulfidation mineralized zones are tending to form along northeast structures, which you can kind of see in the trend of the alteration mm. yeah. on the map. And then you have these uh, transform faults that are cutting through that north-south, um, as you can see with Dark Horse. And where you're getting the intersection of those northeast and north south structures is where you're getting these uh, higher concentrations of gold. In the case of Bayan Hyundai, you've actually had something we call a relay ramp, where you had the uh, two bounding structures sort of open up and you've got the mineralization um, increasing in intensity in that relay ramp structure. So zones of dilation, zones of intersection, and uh, that's what we see with Ulan, Bayan Hyundai, and uh, with Dark Horse. Um, excellent. It's funny, you know, I, I see this in the presentation when I was by myself and I go through it in the presentation, I can, I, my eyes register it, but it doesn't sink in and I don't understand mm -hmm. it until I can hear someone yeah. talking about it and describing it. Thank you. It's really, really helpful. Well, um, you know, another important element too, is that this was found from scratch. You know, this district was a uh, clay anomaly from satellites. So there's nothing it's a clean slate. You know, we're in here for the first time. Most of our drilling focused on the deposits, but 80% of the area you're seeing in front of you has never been drill tested. And it very rarely have we gone below 150 meters, except in those deposit areas. So the potential here is just enormous. And the probability for more discoveries, given what we've already found, it's, it's a tremendously exciting new uh, district. Um, so it was an ASTA um, discovery, was it? It was, it was a remote sensing exercise. Yeah, that's right. So Clay alteration associated with geochemical stream sediment anomalies at Alton Nar pulled us into this district, and then we radiated out from that uh, to do further exploration. The Ulan philic alteration zone you see on the left hand side of the screen is a uh, is an astro anomaly as well. Um, wonderful and. Um, how much, so I can see on the screen here, so you've got the South Ulan gold discovery. I, I can see your mouse, that's great. I can see Bayan Kundi um, and Dark Horse um, Maine. How much of those, of the, of the new the South Ulan and Dark Horse have you drilled out and how much kind of um, is there left to drill out and how deep have you gone on those two? Yeah, so that, as I mentioned, it's, it's pretty amazing what's left to explore here. Between the Bayan Hyundai deposit and Dark Horse, there may be six shallow holes that average less than 100 meters in depth. In the area between Sothu Lawn and Westgate, there's been zero drilling. 
we just acquired 100% interest in the Elan license late in 2020. So our first real effort at exploration took place in 2021 and resulted in this pretty massive discovery in the southeast corner. So we're still yet to move west into the other anomalies that we've seen along trend of that. I'll just share that with you briefly while we're talking about that. So um, you should be able to see now the southeast corner of the Ulan yes. area. Um, so we focused our drilling in that um, area, but you can see these gold anomalies as you continue to move to the to the west that remain untested, have similar geology good rock and soil geochemical anomalism and some good uh, mag low association. Um, and maybe while we're on Ulan, I'll just uh, show you the section through that that we, uh, we've established here recently. When you say mag low, is that magnetite destruction or? That's right, yeah. So you along those structures I talked about earlier, you're seeing magnetite uh, destructive events and therefore a mag low associated with most of these target areas. And, and yeah, it, does it feel that this, kind of, this is polyphase mineralization? Does this feel like kind of long lived um, fluid pathways with kind of overprinting and kind of? There's, there's no question that we have a multi stage event that began with that early porphyry event um, that's subsequently overprinted or telescoped on by the uh, low sulfidation event. Um, you can see that in the textures and, you know, we've done the age dating now to establish the age of the agile areas at, um, at Bayan Hyundai relative to the age of the porphyry system at, um, at Ulan. So yeah, long lived, long lived multi-pulse system. Just trying to pull up the Ulan section here. I'm not sure if you're seeing that on your screen. Yes. Yeah. yeah I can see the Southeast Ulan project area section and plan map. Yeah. So we drilled um, the discovery hole there, which was hole 10. And hole 10 returned 40 meters of 3.7 grams, but within a broader section, using a 0.3 cutoff of 258 meters of 0.12, effectively a gram. And we've stepped out from that now in multiple directions uh, and continue to intersect this broad mineralized zone along one of these uh, north so structural intersections with the uh, Northeast trending faults, but just massive intersections of gram type material. And near the top of that, as you can see in red in the center of your screen, these 30 to 70 meter wide intervals of three gram material. And this is a, this is a typical sort of quartz, agilaria, vein, stockwork type system that you can see uh, in this slide. Apologies for the uh, technical slowness here, but, um, yeah, you can see this uh, stock oh, be type. Uh, beautiful. Really beautiful. Um, so, and, yeah, let's, go ahead. Um, I was just going to kind of say that that seems to be like a kind of a plunging um, body. It was, I can't remember, kind of 80 meters strike length, maybe 50, but just kind of um, going, going down. Is, is that what you... Um, is that the kind of the orientation that you see at um, Bayan Hundi? Um, so Bayan instance. Hundi is a bit, you know, well, it's a bit different in geometry and that Bayan Hundi, the, the basement of Bayan Hundi is um, cannibalized by a late or post-mineral cyanite. So you've got that, probably the same mineralized structure has been used by the post-mineral intrusives that have come up and limited the depth extent of Bayan Hundi. As you move, West onto Ulan, we don't see that. And in fact, all of our holes are um, ending in the volcanic tuff hosts, other than the far southeast corner. And 50% of them have ended in gold mineralization, some of them up to 22 grams per ton over two meters. So lots of room for open at depth opportunities as we move on to Ulan. Just to explain some of the controls around the mineralization. So we have those, those structures I talked about the relay ramp environment has created a series of southwest dipping high-grade veins, but the volcanic package that is most um, susceptible to mineralization or the better host is dipping off to the northwest. So you have three controls on mineralization 
that means you have that high grade zone potentially dipping towards the center of the Ulan alteration system, which is still two kilometers away and untested. Lots of questions. Um, the, the, has your geology team, has your exploration team got a handle on these various controls? Um, what's the, the, the process of learning and predicting? Um, how do you decide to stop drill holes? Can you correlate visual clues in terms of veining intensity or, or, or mineral assemblage yet with grade? So on the question on stopping drill holes, you know, typically we'll push through uh, for tens of meters into mineralized zones. But with Ulan, it was a blind top discovery. And, you know, we had typically been looking at targets of 300, 350 meters, thinking large open pit. So most of those holes were stopping around 350 meters. We pushed one to 450 meters and it stayed mineralized the entire way. So you have 350 meters minimum of mineralization on the Ulan discovery. And that was a vertical, um, was that a vertical hole? They're, they're 85 degrees, so we can do oriented core, but effectively for the sake of argument, vertical holes. Um, the process of learning and understanding these systems and the structures is complemented by the um, independent external consultants that we have working with us in addition to the team on the ground. So we've continued to consult with Jeffrey Heatonquist as we move through the sort of learning curve at um, Bayan Hyundai. And we also employ a, um, a structural expert named Armel Klopenberg, who we just sort of re-engage and she's back into the mix here in the next month or so to take the additional data that we generated in 2021 and help us uh, continue to interpret the structural controls on the system. We have a number of others that uh, assist us in that uh, sort of vein of bringing in external experts. Lots to learn here. You know, this is one of those systems that I think we'll still be talking about learning about a decade from now. So yeah, lots, lots to learn as we move forward. Thank you. Can we um, jump to Dark Horse, unless there's anything um, that I'm kind of missing on um, uh, No, I think, that, I think that's Ulan. good. Let me just pull up a slide. And uh, can you see the Dark Horse plan, Matt? Just tell me when you can see. I can that. see. Yeah, I've got um, Kundi Ulan Epithermal System up. Okay. okay. Let me just, um, I'll show you this map to put it in perspective. So you can see a oblique view of the, um, the surface with the phyllic mm. alteration zone in the front. Mm, nice. Yeah. So surrounding that centralized intrusive uh, alteration system are these low sulfidation bodies. So to the to the south, you have Bayan Hyundai Ulan. And then up here to the north, you have the uh, Dark Horse system. If you look at that in section, which you should be able to see here, mm -hmm. I've put on top of that the uh, Silito model just to sort of get a sense of what we're thinking here. So we're seeing an eroded surface through the argillic alteration zone, but overprinted on that, the low sulfidation system. And along that several kilometers that I showed you just now in plan, we now have four uh, deposits and prospects that stretch over uh, almost five kilometers, uh, yep. anchored by Ulan in the south and in Dark Horse. But let me jump into the Dark Horse discovery here now and show you that, which sits approximately two and a half kilometers north of the Bayan Hyundai deposit. So what we... Um, what happened here in terms of discovery is that moving north from Bayan Hyundai, we're seeing more of a arsenic antimony molybdenum association with the gold mineralization. We had identified that elsewhere and we came back to the dark horse area early in 2021 when a previous hole had shown that intense indicator element association, but not much gold. So we went in around that and did some drilling. And one of those holes um, came up with, you know, somewhere around 20 meters of five grams of gold. And that was the initial discovery in early 2021 that led us to uh, a significant drill program at uh, Dark Horse that took place through most of last year. That's, the, um, uh, that, that very much confirms my kind of philosophy of 100 gram meters is, is pretty much a discovery hole as, as long as it, you, as long as it continues, you know, but um, that's the kind of thing that gets the board of directors um, quite that's excited. Right. Yeah. So I'm showing you now a section, a long section through that dark horse discovery. Yeah. And you can see the intense red is where we have uh, greater than 0.4 grams of gold. And we've divided it into dark horse south, 
which is um, near that magmatic hydrothermal breccia and then the north zone. The south zone is where we've had this intense, you know, bonanza grade intersections. And let me just jump over to that. Are these all leapfrog um, images? They are, yeah. Yeah. So you can see here the intense uh, violet color is where we've had um, multiple holes that are you know, 10 to 30 meters of over five grams. It's not unusual for us to be seeing ounce plus material in this oxide zone. And it starts uh, in the south in this image at about, it starts near surface, but it continues down about 25 meters. And it is plunging to, the, uh, to depth as we move to the, um, to the north. You know, as you know, some of these deep structures can be quite deeply oxidized and we'll continue to trace that. But most of our drilling to date has been focused on drilling off this near surface oxide zone. The results you'll see in the next couple of weeks are testing the zone as we move further to the south and seeing if we can get extensions on this ultra high grade. But generally you're looking at, you know, uh, from surface to 20 to 40 meter deep high grade oxide blanket sitting at surface. We only have a couple of holes at depth that have intersected the more sulfide uh, rich zones. And, you know, we're seeing 20 to 30 meters of two, three gram material mm -hmm. at depth in a couple of holes, but we really need to do more exploration to look for those higher grade feeder zones that will become narrower as we uh, get deeper into that system. Yeah. Yeah. But great. What a, uh, what a great um, sweetener for a, uh, for a plant that's going to be opening up. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite amazing to see the grades we've repeatedly pulled out of here. You know, the first couple of holes, we anticipated seeing good grades in the oxide, but to be uh, seeing these types of, seeing this continuity and this types of grades will add some ounces very rapidly. We have done uh, initial bottle roll testing on this. And as you'd expect with an oxide system, the recoveries are high 80s into mid 90s. And we're doing more advanced work as we speak with uh, Blue Coast out of Vancouver. And um, so that was that was Dark Main, um, um, Dark Horse sure. South. Um, what about Dark Horse North? Has that got us uh, kind of a similar oxide? Obviously it won't be similar but um, or identical, but does it also have oxide resources that you'd be looking at early exploration, uh, yeah. early, early, early development? Or Absolutely. We haven't seen those bonanza type grades at Dark Horse North, but we're seeing sort of 0.2 to a gram of gold over 10 to 20 meter intervals. So there will be ore there, um, but yeah, not yet seeing those bonanza type grades. We are seeing broad areas of epithermal breccias, uh, chalcedonic veining, and very thick intersections of low grade material is deeper in the system in that area. So, you know, up to 130 meters of half a gram in one instance in Dark Horse North. And the drilling has been shallow. We're only down, you know, vertically hundred meters or so, and there, that's open at depth. So a tremendous opportunity to see a bigger system take shape at depth here, but we've been so focused and excited about this near ter near surface oxide. That's where a lot of our work has been recently. And so I feel like I'm slightly breathless and overcome with all the excitement. <laughs> um, so can we kind of just take a step back and just kind of, um, and breathe. Sure. And um, just talk about where, what the plan is for the year and just kind of in terms of the major milestones, just kind of let's, let's go, let, let's go big picture again for a bit. Yeah. So looking at the near term opportunities to complement or enhance the Bayan Hyundai development, which I think you're familiar with the fact that we have 400,000 ounces of gold in reserve at three and a half grams. We are looking at opportunities to bring in some additional material upgrade. So we don't have to necessarily change up the uh, design of the plant, but we can increase that production. So I'm focused on bringing the dark horse oxide into a reserve category and also some of the ore at Alton Nar that is already in indicated into a um, updated reserve model that allow us to push that production from buying Hyundai up to closer to 75, 80,000 ounces per year, but also to be able to stretch out that mine life from six to eight years. So that's sort of the low hanging fruit enhancement opportunity. And that drilling has largely been done. You'll see the results from Dark Horse in the coming weeks and Alton Nar is already established. So there's some work with the engineers to establish those as viable economic pits, but that's, uh, that's an opportunity that's right in front of us. Looking at the bigger picture, 
uh, and the plans for 2022, Ulan's provided us with a very substantial new discovery. You know, to be hitting 100 to 300 meter wide zones of a gram of gold and a Western extension that's yet to be tested, that's a tremendous area for us to focus exploration. That'll be a major program as we move into, um, into the field season of 2022. I'm anticipating that between Ulan, Deep Dark Horse, and some drilling at, um, at Alton Nar, we'll have a program that will ultimately be close to 50,000 meters. The initial stages of that will be about a 10,000 meter program in Q2. And some of that initial work will be establishing additional targets. You know, we, we have a wealth of opportunities we just talked about, but we have intersections in holes that we haven't followed up on that are in excess of an ounce of gold near surface in other areas on this license. It was just a tremendous opportunity for us to continue our exploration at a more um, aggressive level. And that's what will start to happen as we move into Q2 of this year. Given that there are so few big discoveries globally and that you're, you're learning so much about the exploration, is there a kind of part of your brain which thinks maybe we should just try and get an envelope around this mineral system before going into production? Is, is, is there part of the exploration geologist in you going, hang about, we've got, a, we've got a really big system here, let's drill it out and we'll make it something that is globally significant? Yeah. There certainly is. Um, you know, when we made a decision to move forward with the development of Bayanundi, it was largely on the backs of what we talked about earlier, which is there's only been a few small windows that have opened in our industry in terms of financial support that allow you to raise monies without massive dilution. And we've been lucky enough to pass through a couple of those. But it's a question of, you know, is it better to establish that cash flow and protect shareholder value and then get to that uh, prize? Or is it better to go ahead and raise the monies now necessary to explore this fully? I'm afraid that exploring this fully is going to take a, a very long period of time and it's going to result in a, a very significant world-class discovery. But it's it's uh, balancing that act as you move forward to try to do some of both. You know, I look at our strategy as a two-pronged approach get that initial shovel ready project up and running as soon as we can with cash flow while we progress on the expiration somewhat measured i guess until we have the wherewithal to do it properly but you know when you look at what we've discovered and if you put it into another jurisdiction that's uh, perhaps more favored for expiration dollars like ecuador or nevada you know there would be hundreds of millions of dollars pouring into this district and that's what it's going to take to truly understand what we have not just at by in Hyundai, but stretch that out 40 kilometers to Zoon Mod or 16 kilometers to Alton Nur. Those are world class gold polymetallic and porphyry systems, and no expirations taken on between them. So, yeah, it's it's a question, Merlin, that we're constantly asking ourselves. But we have embarked on this two prong strategy, and you know, market conditions influence how far you go with some of those as well. Yeah. Um, you know, a two thousand yeah. dollar gold price makes a big difference on what you can access without dilution to more aggressively explore. Yeah. Well, goodness. Um, thank you so much for t- taking me through it. Um, I guess there's part of me as an exploration geologist that um, always thinks that a mining operation is a kind of a, uh, a frustrating and complicated business um, that will just suck in management time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I completely understand the, the pressures on capital as well and the pressures on um, the, the market seems to be so fickle and wanting to see that kind of value growth through advancing towards production as well. So it's, it, I, I, it's, a, it's worthy of a board level discussion, I'm sure. <laughs> there's, there's lots of those. I think the one thing that is important to understand in the decision to move forward with buying Hyundai is just how simple and high grade it is you know it's it's a, a world-class grade on a you know, probably top decile of grades for open pits globally it has very simple metallurgy you know, there's no complexity so great recoveries it's in an area that has very little issues in terms of um you know water or otherwise and it's close closer to infrastructure than it's ever been we're just 200 kilometers from a major mining district now so it has a lot going for it to make it a relatively simple startup i know all mining projects 
are never simple, but um, on a relative basis, this is a uh, exceptional one. And if you can add some five gram or six gram oxides for the first year or two to pay yourself um, back the capex, then that's then you're, you're home and dry. Absolutely, Peter. Thank you so much. I've I've really got a much better flavour um, for the company and for the project. Um, what have I? You know, is there anything else that you feel that you kind of want to want to share? I mean. There's, there's a lot there. I think we've touched on the high points. Um, I think sort of the, the driving um, message over the past year has been with a little bit more exploration, we can uh, generate some very substantial discoveries. And that excites me for what's to come as we move through 2022. I look forward to um, uh, seeing the news flow and perhaps at some stage we can um, get you back and uh, you can explain some more geology to me. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Merlin.